So this is the Bioenergy Lab at the Rhine Research Center, and we're in our last session with Ed Edwards. In this session, we're trying to determine whether he's producing light or actually affecting the machine. And what we're going to do first is take a baseline. And then once we take a baseline, you're seeing the readings of the number of photons that are being produced every half second in that lab. Photons of ultraviolet light. After we take our baseline for about five minutes, then we're going to ask Ed to begin his healing practice and measure and see if there's any change in the photons from the baseline. Once we have determined the photons that he produces during the healing session, then I'm going to ask him to close the shutter and then ask him to continue his healing session to see if the machine is affected when the light can get into it. And then finally, we're going to take a final baseline. The whole process should take about 20 minutes. And you can see right now that the baseline is running below 13 photons every half second. That's pretty normal. What we usually see is somewhere between 12 and 20 for maximum photons in the baseline session. So you can see on the left, the scale goes from 0 to 13. Everything so far has been under 13. If we get a spike above that level, the scale on the left will change to a different scale, and the numbers will be higher. And now we are approaching the 5-minute mark for our baseline, and then I will tell Ed to start his healing. Okay, Ed, you can start your healing. And now this is a section. <laughs> this is a section where Ed is starting his healing. And you notice we did have a slight chain, just jumped up to 15, which you notice the scale has changed a bit on the left hand side here. That's not something we would consider a significant change, unless we saw it a lot during the session. That was a jump up to 31, and another one to 22. Now we're starting to see groupings of photons. 23, 23. That one's up to 30 again, and you can see the difference and the energy level here versus, or the number of photons here versus what was going on during the baseline session. The highest one we got during the baseline was up to 13. And now we're getting them into the 20s and 30s. As we do get these changes, I'm going to play a tone for Ed just to let him know that there's been a change in the number of photons we're getting. Just have a number up to 36. And this tone is to give Ed feedback to let him know that we've had a change without interrupting his concentration. That was a jump up to 52, so I'm going to play a slightly higher tone. And you can see the significant difference here from where the baseline was. It's obvious there's activity going on. Again, we had a small jump there.
now we're getting jump, got one jump up to 16, which at the beginning would have looked significant, but compared to what we're getting in the 20s and 30s, 16 doesn't really look as important right now. Another one up to 23. All in all, I'm going to let this run for five minutes before I ask it to close the shutter and we check to see if we still get effects when light cannot get into the camera to see if he's directly affecting the electronics. Okay, Ed, you can close the shutter now, but keep your he keep doing your healing. Okay. So now the shutter is closed, which means there's absolutely no light getting in. And the numbers are staying below five, six staying fairly low. The reason we actually do get readings of photons is the electronics have some electronic noise in the background, which provide for some readings. Now we're just going to jump up to 21, which is unusual with the shutter closed. If we continue to see that, that's an indication that Ed is directly affecting the machinery instead of actually producing light. You had one small spike. Small. The numbers are all down in 0, 1, 4, 2, 3, very, very low. And that's what we call background noise or electronic noise with the equipment. Now we start jump up to 11. It's apparent there is, seems to be some variation, but having one jump to 11 and one jump to 20 is not su sufficient to determine there's an effect. We'd have to see a consistent difference from the baseline. Okay, and get mad at it. Get mad at it. Get angry. Get angry at that machine. Make it 
Make it do something. We had a slight jump up to 16. With the shutter closed, it should never jump up that high. There's a big jump right there. That's the largest jump we've seen so far. So. <laughs> Notice the scale on the side of the frame up to 92, and we have a spike that went up at 80s while the shutter is closed, which is higher than anything we saw while the shutter was open. So I'm letting this run a little longer than five minutes because we got a spike late in the process. Now we're taking the baseline with the shutter closed to see what the variation is from the time when he was in the lab trying to have an effect with the shutter closed. Again, we have a jump up to 11, which is small, but it shows us what the normal variation is with the shutter closed. Now here we are three and a half, four and a half minutes into the final baseline and we have not had one spike above 11. Whereas when Adam was trying to affect the machine, we had spikes into the 20s and one in the 80s. So we're getting ready to stop. And this is the end of the session.